Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, welcome back to this Book of Mormon podcast. This is going to be for Alma chapter 45. Now we've taken a break in the action from the wars and battles between the Lamanites and the Nephites for a little bit. Alma is now going to be giving the records over to his son Helaman. And so um, this is going to be that account. And uh, in the previous chapter was the end of the record of Alma. And so now we're going to begin a record of Helaman. Beginning in verse 1, Behold, now it came to pass that the people of Nephi were exceedingly rejoiced, because the Lord had again delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. Therefore they gave thanks unto the Lord their God, yea, and they did fast much and pray much, and they did worship God with exceedingly great joy. And it came to pass in the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Alma came unto his son Helaman, and said unto him, Believest thou the words which I spake unto thee concerning those records which had been kept? And Helaman said unto him, Yea, I believe. And Alma said again, Believest thou in Jesus Christ who shall come? And he said, Yea, I believe all the words which thou hast spoken. And Alma said unto him again, Will ye keep my commandments? And he said, Yea, I will keep thy commandments with all my heart. Then Alma said unto him, Blessed art thou, and the Lord shall prosper thee in the land. But behold, I have somewhat to prophesy unto thee, but what I prophesy unto thee ye shall not make known, yea, What I prophesy unto thee shall not be made known, even until the prophecy is fulfilled. Therefore write the words which I shall say. And these are the words. Behold, I perceive that this very people, the Nephites, according to the spirit of revelation which is in me, in four hundred years from the time that Jesus Christ shall manifest himself unto them, shall dwindle in unbelief. Yea, and then shall they see wars and pestilences, yea, famines and bloodshed, even until the people of Nephi shall become extinct. Yea, and this because they shall dwindle in unbelief and fall into the works of darkness and lasciviousness and all manner of iniquities. Yea, I say unto you that because they shall sin against so great light and knowledge, yea, I say unto you that from that day even the fourth generation shall not all pass away before this great iniquity shall come. And when that great day cometh, behold, the time very soon cometh that those who are now, or the seed of those who are now numbered among the people of Nephi, shall no more be numbered among the people of Nephi. But whosoever remaineth and is not destroyed in that great and dreadful day shall be numbered among the Lamanites, and shall become like unto them, all, save it be a few, who shall be called the disciples of the Lord. And I think he's talking here about the three Nephites. And them shall the Lamanites pursue even until they shall become extinct. And now, because of iniquity, this prophecy shall all shall be fulfilled. Not all the Nephites were killed at Cumorah. There are four groups who, which survived at least temporarily. The 24 survivors of the final battle, the group who had tried a southward escape, those who had deserted to the Lamanites, and the robbers which may have been mixed uh, with Nephites and Lamanite lineage. Except for Moroni, the members of the first and second groups were eventually hunted until they were killed, but the third and fourth groups were never completely exterminated. The Nephite deserters and Gadianton members survived. However, they did not retain their identity, but became Lamanites, as Alma prophesied. Hence, the Nephites as a nation and as a people had been destroyed. But there would still be Nephites that would be descendants from Nephi that that would survive even to now, even to our day. Verse 15, And now it came to pass that after Alma had said these things to Helaman, he blessed him and also his other sons, and he also blessed the earth for the righteousness' sake. And he said, Thus saith the Lord God, Cursed shall be the land, yea, this land, even unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, unto destruction, which do wickedly when they are fully ripe. And as I have said, so shall it be, for thus, for this is the cursing and the blessing of God upon the land. For the Lord God look upon sin, For the Lord God cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. It's true that God does not look upon sin with any allowance, but when we do sin, then he gives us an allowance, and that is that he allows us to repent, to return unto him. Delbert L. Stapley said, To receive exaltation in the kingdom of God, a person must abide the fullness of celestial law. 
Some people erroneously think if they receive all the ordinances of the gospel, regardless of their transgressions, they will inherit the celestial mansions of our God. What a rude awakening awaits such false thinking individuals, for the Lord cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. Elder Oaks said, As Nephi foresaw in the last days, there shall also be many which shall say, Eat, drink, and be merry. Nevertheless, fear God. He will justify in committing a little sin. There is no harm in this. But according to the prophets of ancient and modern times, the Lord cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. Verse 17, And now when Alma had said these words, he blessed the church, yea, all those who should stand fast in the faith from that time henceforth. I think he must be also talking about us. So he's blessed us too. How cool is that? Verse 18, And when Alma had done this, he departed out of the land of, Jer out of, the land of Zarahemla, as if to go into the land of Melech. And it came to pass that he was never heard of more as to his death and burial. We know not of. Alma was probably translated. Remember that Alma had wished to be an angel so he could preach the gospel like the angel that visited him. Maybe he got his wish. Verse 19, Behold, this we know, that he was a righteous man. And the saying went abroad in the church that he was taken up by the Spirit or buried by the hand of the Lord, even as Moses. But behold, the scripture saith that the Lord took Moses unto himself, and we suppose that he has also received Alma in the Spirit unto himself. Therefore, for this cause, we know nothing concerning his death and burial. Elder McConkie said, Moses, Elijah, and Alma the younger were translated. The Old Testament account that Moses died and was buried by the hand of the Lord is an unknown in an unknown grave is an error. It is true that he may have been buried by the hand of the Lord, if that expression is a figure of speech, which means that he was translated. But the Book of Mormon account in recording that Alma was taken up by the Spirit says the scriptures saith the Lord took Moses unto himself, and we suppose that he has also received Alma in the Spirit unto himself. It should be remembered that the Nephites had the brass plates, and that they were the scriptures which gave the account of Moses being taken by the way of translation. As to Elijah, the account of his being taken in a chariot of fire by a whirlwind into heaven is majestically set out in the Old Testament. Verse 20, And now it came to pass in the commencement of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, this is around 73 B.C., that Helaman went forth among the people to declare the word unto them. For behold, because of their wars and their lame their wars with the Lamanites, and with the many dissensions and disturbances which had been among the people, it became expedient that the word of God should be declared among them, yea, and that a regulation should be made throughout the church. Therefore Helaman and his brethren went forth to establish the church again in all the land, yea, in every city throughout all the land which was possessed by the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that they did appoint priests and teachers throughout all the land over all the churches. And now it came to pass that after Helaman and his brethren had appointed priests and teachers over the churches, that there arose a dissension among them, and they would not give heed to the words of Helaman and his brethren. But they grew proud, being lifted up in their hearts, because of their exceedingly great riches. Therefore they grew rich in their own eyes, and would not give heed to their words, to walk uprightly before God. Looks like the Nephites need to be reminded of their covenants. Maybe the Lamanites could attack them again to cause them to trust in the Lord. Just a thought. Anyway, uh, that's the end of chapter 45, and so now uh, Helaman is now going to be the leader uh, of the church, and uh, he has set things in order here as far as the church is concerned, and uh, we'll go on with that one to the next chapter. See you next one.